Hello guys and welcome to this video to talk about when you should open a periodontal flap. And here I'm going to talk about only full thickness or mucoperiosteal flaps as this was the one that I used the most in my life as a dentist and oral implantologist and I believe it's you know one of the most important uh, surgical procedures that you should learn. So the main reason why you want to open a periodontal full thickness flap is to provide access to a bone area or a periodontal pocket, but then uh, in most of the cases you are also going to do an osteotomy. So the five most common clinical and surgical procedures that you might want and might need to open a flap are these ones that you are seeing on the screen now, okay? So surgical extractions when you need to get access to the tooth or you need to do an osteotomy, for example. Then periodontal surgeries, you might want to get access to defurcation, for example, or you want to do an open flap debridement or a crown lengthening procedure which might include osteotomy as well, and then apical surgeries, so we need to get access to a periapical lesion, for example, to remove the periapical lesion, and also the implant placement procedures, where we need to place the implants in the alveolar bone, and also the bone grafting procedures, so you want to get access to the native bone of the patient, or the maxillary sinus, for example, to graft this area and then provide new bone formation for the patient. And this is required prior to implant placement, for example, when the patient doesn't have bone height or bone width available. However, there are also some contraindications and basically those are the contraindications of any surgical procedure. So basically uncontrolled medical conditions. Of course, a controlled hypertension or controlled diabetes will not be a contraindication for a neural surgery usually. But then poor plaque control or very bad conditions of hygiene, this could be a risk for the surgical outcome depending on the situation. So let's see some cases now and we are going to talk about the first key point which is to plan the location of our incision and of course this will be related to the area of the bone that we want to access. So now you guys are seeing a flap composed by a horizontal incision only with no release incisions, okay? So the envelope flap is on the screen and basically the location of my incision was actually this one that you guys are seeing now on green. So this is the areas that I want to do my incision and then this will allow me to expose buckle to the incision, this area now marked with the B letter. Palatal to my incision, then I will expose this area. So those are the areas that I will elevate with the flap that I want to raise. So now let's see another case, a very similar case, but now we have a longer dental span. So now I placed two Strauman tissue level implants here and on the red arrow you guys are seeing that instead of retracting the palatal side of the flap, I just sutured this side to retract the flap with the sutures. So let's see one more case now and this case is uh, very similar, so no releasing incisions, it is still the envelope flap on the screen but now there is a situation we have two adjacent teeth included in the incision and of course that means that we need to suture this papilla marked with the black circle, okay? And we need to suture this papilla on the respective palatal side. So then let's see cases where we needed to open a releasing incision as well. So you guys are seeing a case of a surgical extraction. This was a tooth with a failing root canal, failing post, and then the tooth had also symptoms and had to be extracted. However, the root was also curved towards the buccal direction. And that's why after opening the flap, we can even see the apex through the buccal plate. So basically that's the location of my incision and of course I have the releasing incision, okay? That's called Neumann flap. You guys are reading Neumann but the name is German. So we say Neumann flap and this allows us to of course to perform the surgical extraction. After the surgical extraction we grafted the socket so the socket preservation procedure is on the screen because this was part of an implant planning procedure. So now you guys are seeing the implant planning and the implant placement surgery on the healthy bone and this allowed to implant rehabilitation of three splinted implant supported single crowns. Also please realize that we have the second key point which is that we need to use our blade with the correct angles and always on healthy bone. So all we need to do is to start our incision with 90 degrees with the scapel blade, perform the incision with 45 degrees and then finish the incision with 90 degrees again. That's the most acceptable procedure on the books. So let's see other procedures. Now we have 
bone grafting procedures and the sinus floor augmentation or sinus lift procedure is on the screen. But now the flap is different, the flap is still the Neumann flap, but now we have not the triangular version, we have the trapezoidal version because we have two releasing incisions. We have the anterior and the posterior releasing incisions allowing us to have access to a larger area. On the picture of the middle you guys are seeing that we start the sutures by the angle of the releasing incision and this is actually one procedure that helps a lot for suturing this type of flap. Okay, so now we have the third key point and that's also very important. Please realize that all the flaps we should do with a longer base as compared with the height. So always the base, so the horizontal incision should be longer than the height or the releasing incisions. And now let's see one more case. So now another sinus lift procedure is on the screen. We can see that the buccal tissue was not keratinized, so we need to be careful about that. And then you guys are seeing the location of the releasing incisions being on the mesial aspect of the buccal surface of the tooth for the anterior releasing incision and then of course on the distal aspect of the buccal surface of the distal tooth for the distal releasing incision. But we can also do incisions without involving the papilla of the teeth. So let's see some examples. We have now the parch flap on the screen, so that's the semilunar or parch flap, which is very useful for procedures like this, for example, an apical surgery. That's the location of the incision, okay, so the semilunar incision, but we could also do a different type of incision. Here we could also do the Vasmund flap. Okay, so you guys are seeing now in purple the Vasmund flap. However, the Vasmund flap was not done here. I'm just showing that it's another option as an example. And then we did the apical surgery and sutured with primary closure using Vicryl sutures, showing that this is achievable using a flap like this. And of course, there are other types of flaps. There are many other different procedures acceptable, but the main point is use the appropriate flap to provide access to the area that you want to access. And this area will never be too close to the incision as well. So those were the tips and key points of today. If you guys liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel because that's a very good support for us, and see you guys on the next videos.